happened. According to the theory of evolution, over the passage of eons, all living things descended from one another by means of gradual changes. Yet if this claim of evolution were true, then flawed, imperfect, underdeveloped, intermediate forms representing such an imaginary process must once have existed. For example, half fish and half reptilian creatures must once have existed having acquired certain reptilian characteristics while still retaining fish-like ones. Or creatures displaying both reptilian and bird-like characteristics should have appeared. Furthermore, there must have been millions even billions more of these intermediate forms than existing species. And naturally, we should have encountered plentiful fossils of these intermediate forms in rock strata all over the world. As a result, all the museums in the world should have been displaying fossils of half fish, half reptiles, half reptile, half birds, semi-finned, semi-tailed, half-winged, half-legged, eyeless, earless, one-eyed, one-eared life forms, all imperfect and deficient in some way. Darwin, who was well aware of this fact, said in his book, The Origin of Species, If my theory be true, numberless intermediate varieties linking most closely all of the species of the same group together must assuredly have existed. Consequently, evidence of their former existence could be found only amongst fossil remains. When we look at the fossil record, however, we see no intermediate forms at all. On the contrary, we encounter fully formed, flawless, complex, and perfect life forms. Those that have not gone extinct are no different from those living today. Darwin was also aware of the complete lack of the intermediate form fossils he had proposed. In fact, he even predicted that this would represent a major stumbling block for his theory. He therefore wrote the following in the chapter titled Difficulties on Theory in the Origin of Species. Why, if species have descended from other species by insensibly fine gradations, do we not everywhere see innumerable transitional forms? Why is not all nature in confusion instead of the species being, as we see them, well defined? But, as by this theory innumerable transitional forms must have existed, why do we not find them embedded in countless numbers in the crust of the earth? Why then is not every geological formation and every stratum full of such intermediate links? Geology assuredly does not reveal any such finely graduated organic chain. And this perhaps is the most obvious and gravest objection which can be urged against my theory. And Darwin's fears did indeed become a reality. 
For some 150 years now, evolutionists have been digging through the Earth's geologic strata, but have not encountered even one single intermediate form, of which there should, according to their own calculations, be trillions. Fictitious and deceptive concepts produced by evolutionists such as primitive life forms, gradual evolution, transition among species, intermediate forms and missing links have been consigned to the realm of myth by living fossils. Faced with this intermediate form dilemma, Darwin's only explanation was that the fossil record of his time was insufficient. In putting forward his theory, Darwin claimed that living species are evolved from one another, and when the fossil record is examined, millions of intermediate forms will be found, in the hope that these would be discovered in due time. The fact is, however, that today's fossil record is sufficiently rich to completely demolish Darwin's claim. Between Darwin's time and the present day, some 100 million fossils belonging to 250,000 species recorded by scientists have been collected, yet there is not one single intermediate form fossil among them. Today, 99% of the fossils in the Earth's strata have been unearthed and examined. The total absence of any such transitional fossils among them shows that it is logically impossible that these imaginary life forms will suddenly emerge from the remaining 1%. To hope, nonetheless, that intermediate life forms will one day be found is nothing more than evolutionist wishful thinking. Thomas Neville George, a professor of geology at the University of Glasgow, admitted as much a long time ago. There is no need to apologize any longer for the poverty of the fossil record. In some ways it has become almost unmanageably rich and discovery is outpacing integration. The fossil record nevertheless continues to be composed mainly of gaps. Evolutionists constantly attempt to answer the question of how life emerged and developed by resorting to speculation. But were they to interpret fossils going back hundreds of millions of years in an unprejudiced and objective manner, they would easily find the answer to that question. <laughs> 